Rich in history, but technologically poised for the future, Reynolds Auditorium remains one of Winston-Salem, North Carolina's proudest and most recognizable landmarks. The 1900-seat theater with a mezzanine and balcony offers the elegance of a time gone by with the comforts modern performers need. After a multi-million dollar renovation in 2002, Reynolds Auditorium is one of the finest performing venues in North Carolina. The roots of the auditorium are preserved in statues, portraits, and stories in a building that has hosted some of the finest performers in the world. But to understand why this building is more than mortar and stone, you must understand its past. Many would consider this grand auditorium a gift, and in fact, that is exactly how it began. In 1919, land and money were donated by some of Winston-Salem's wealthiest citizens. Prior to Reynolds High School and Auditorium being built, philanthropists generally gave to the creation of universities, not to the creation of local public schools. And so this gift of the land and money for this building and P.A. Haynes' gift for uh, Haynes Park was really a, a new direction for philanthropists. P.H. Haynes, a leader in textiles, and Catherine Smith Reynolds, widow of tobacco giant R.J. Reynolds, came together to help this city build a new high school. Ms. Reynolds envisioned the auditorium as a memorial to her late husband. While the area had a rich history with the industrious Winston and the smaller Salem, the Twin City was only six years old in 1919. The two towns were merged in 1913 and the hyphen appeared for the first time. The new Winston-Salem was a proud industrial giant. High-rise buildings began to emerge downtown and the city, then the largest in the state, was home to the world's largest tobacco manufacturer and the South's largest producer of knit goods. R.J. Reynolds and Haynes, respectively. We were really successful. We had banks, they were building roads, we had corporations. This was new, it was exciting, and everybody was looking towards a great future. Until 1930, Winston-Salem was the largest city in North Carolina. City leaders wanted, and the new city needed, a new high school. The auditorium was a welcome bonus. The school would serve the children, but the auditorium would serve the entire community and become a glamorous, modern home for the arts. Philadelphia architect Barton Keene was commissioned to design the school and the auditorium. After years of roadblocks, construction on the Memorial Auditorium began in the summer of 1922. Almost two years later, in May of 1924, the auditorium was complete and dedicated in a ceremony that spanned four days. Sadly, the woman who funded the building and envisioned it as a great community resource could not attend the dedication ceremony and was just days away from death. In an ironic twist, just weeks after being dedicated, the auditorium overflowed with mourners at her memorial service. She was in New York. She was giving birth to the second child that she had with J. Edward Johnson, and she died in childbirth shortly after the auditorium was completed. The death of Katherine Reynolds Johnson was such a blow to a grateful city that on the day of her memorial service, stores and offices were closed. But the city moved forward and marveled at the spectacular gift bearing the name of a man who brought them such fortune. The features of the auditorium were state-of-the-art for the mid-1920s. The Grand Portico was aimed east to overlook Haynes Park. The 172 by 110 foot entrance to the auditorium was an adaptation of the Palladian style with brick and Indiana limestone. There are three large stairs leading up to the building, all cut from Mount Airy, North Carolina granite. They reached out to the best of the best in constructing this. Charles Barton Keene was a well-known architect who was working with Catherine Smith Reynolds. They wanted to have theater design that was on par with New York. The entire building was reinforced with steel and concrete. Inside, no detail was overlooked. Every seat offered a good view of the stage. Over 6,000 feet of felt was used in the ceiling and the walls to assure maximum acoustics. 
Arguably the most talked about and interesting feature of the new auditorium was the elaborate heating and cooling system. Outside air was brought in courtesy of a huge air shaft, warmed by a series of heating coils and then forced through vents beneath the seats on the main floor. The cooling effect was achieved much the same way. They had um, I, big blocks of ice under the floor of the auditorium and they passed water over the ice and the cooling mist would come up through little mushroom caps in the floor. You can still see the, 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 where the caps have been. Guests were greeted in a lobby where no detail was overlooked. The main floor of the auditorium originally sat 1,030, the grand balcony another 1,191. The stage was 36 feet deep and 67 feet wide. The orchestra pit accommodated more than 100 musicians. This building was modeled after the University of Virginia, um, and the auditorium was the central focus of the whole campus. As word of the Grand Hall spread, some of the best known performers and personalities graced the stage. Through the years, the auditorium was refurbished and updated, but by 1963, it had fallen victim to time and was in bad need of updating. A major renovation took place, and that same year, control of the building was handed over to the newly consolidated Winston-Salem for Scythe County School System. They reworked the seating, they recovered all the seats, and it was really a beautiful auditorium again after that. By the 1990s, the auditorium was again in need of major repairs. In 1998, a group of alumni and civic leaders formed the group Friends of the Reynolds Auditorium and spearheaded efforts to raise money for a renovation. The group wanted to restore the auditorium to its original grandeur and at the same time bring much needed modern updates. In 2002, the major overhaul began. Technologically and aesthetically, the auditorium was overhauled and today remains one of the city's premier venues. Between you know performances at night and the things in the pep rallies and the cultural aspects and, and the community, it was, as I said, it was a mecca for the community to come in and, and showcase uh, local, uh, statewide, national and international talent. Uh, there's, there's never been anything like it I've ever heard of on the campus of a high school before, which makes it so unique. The auditorium now boasts up-to-date features with 1,900 seats. The fixed depth orchestra pit accommodates 35 musicians. There's a full fly system, computerized lighting system, auxiliary power connections for touring equipment, a listening assistive system, backstage facilities, and free on-site parking. You haven't seen a performance, you haven't seen a play, you haven't seen an opera, you haven't seen a poet reading, you haven't seen a, a pep rally until you see it in Reynolds Auditorium. What other city has that? It is such an incredibly beautiful landmark, and it's like any other city. We, we seem to get used to what we see, and we, we forget how absolutely beautiful it is. The RJR Auditorium continues to serve the Winston-Salem community with top-notch performances and remains as iconic as it is beautiful and functional.